Okay, there we go, and now we're recording. So welcome everyone. I'm just going to share my screen right now. So let us start by introducing ourselves first. Philippe, would you like to go first? Hi, I'm Philippe Freire. I've been the coordinator of this physics double degree. And uh, my background is in physics, where when I was more involved in the research, I was working in the fundamental interactions and cosmology. Okay, and my name is Kim Zwitserloot. Uh, I work at University College Utrecht as an assistant professor in economics as well as a tutor, but I'm also responsible for our international student recruitment, which is uh, why I'm here today, though of course there are also people from the Netherlands here. Hmm. We were supposed to be joined by one of our students in the double degree in physics, Yoldas. Unfortunately, he had to call in sick, um, but if you do have questions for him, he did tell us to really emphasize that if you would like to get in touch with him and ask him any questions about his personal experiences with the program, he's more than willing to email with you. So if you would like that, let us know and we'll give you his email address. Um, so what we're going to do first is the first 15 minutes or so will be an introduction to University College Utrecht itself. Uh, and the second half of the presentation will really focus in particular on the double degree in physics. Um, during the presentation, feel free to ask your chat uh, questions in the chat. Um, we will answer them at the end. Um, yeah, and with that, I mean, I'm going to start with just a general introduction and then Philippe will really introduce uh, you into, uh, yeah, into the double degree program. So University College Utrecht, that is the program where you can do the double degree. Because if you study the double degree in physics here, you would do that in the context of a liberal arts and sciences program. And University College Utrecht itself, it's a part of Utrecht University. We are one of the honors colleges of Utrecht University. So if you study here, you will get a degree from Utrecht University. We offer a liberal arts and sciences program that can either lead to either a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science program. Um, well, in this case, if you're doing the double degree, that would lead to a Bachelor of Science, of course. We are residential. That means that housing is guaranteed. You don't need to look for a room. If you are admitted, you will get a room on campus. Very small scale. We only have 750 students with on average 20 students in the classroom. And we're very international. About half of our students come from abroad and they represent over 70 different nationalities. So what kind of student are we looking for? So this is the student profile for UCU in general. It's of course a little bit more specific when it comes to physics, but also in general, that's sort of the profile that you would need to meet. We're looking for students who have a broad academic interest. So generally, our students would say they don't know what they want. Not so much the case for the double degree in physics, but there's still that element of there's other stuff I like. There's just a lot of stuff that I'm interested in and I would like to explore. I don't immediately want to focus on one thing only. We're looking for students who are intellectually curious. So often have students come to me and say, oh, I was listening to this podcast and they had this really great idea and I want to talk about it. So students who just really get excited about knowledge. Students who want to live in a diverse and international environment. Students who are motivated. We are an honors college and that means that our workload is quite a bit higher than it would be for a regular program. So we're looking for students who really want to make the most of the opportunities they would get here. And we're looking for students who are socially engaged. And that can take many forms. It could be that you simply um, are engaged in voluntary work. It could be that you're organizing maybe a musical or that you're involved in the STEM committee on campus. It could be a whole bunch of different things, but we're looking for people who really want to be part of this tight knit community. So what I want to talk about today is what it means to study liberal arts and sciences at University College Utrecht, what it means to live here, because we really believe that you don't just study liberal arts and sciences here, but you really live it. What you can do afterwards, um, what the double degree with physics entails, and of course, admissions and finance. So to start with the first bit, studying at University College Utrecht. Well, we offer a degree called liberal arts and sciences, and that may make you think, what on earth is that? And the idea behind it is really very simple. The world isn't disciplinary. The world isn't organized by fields. So if you want to understand the world better, no matter what topic you are interested in, you will get a better understanding of it. You will be able to look at something from different viewpoints if you have studied multiple subjects. So if you think about global warming, 
Obviously, some knowledge of urban environment is relevant, some uh, knowledge of biology is relevant. Physics extremely important as well to understand how the different elements in that system, in an environmental system, interact. But it would also be relevant to know something about international law, to understand what can you do, because this is, of course, an international problem and not a national problem. It's useful to know something about international politics, but also anthropology, because culture determines how people view nature. Do they see human beings as separate from nature? There's the environment and there is us. Or do they see people or human beings as part of nature, as one holistic whole? Those are the kind of insights that can really help you understand better how the world works and how a phenomenon like global warming works. So even if your interest is predominantly in physics, there are plenty of other subjects and fields that would be relevant for you to deepen your understanding. Now, at University College Utrecht, uh, liberal arts and sciences means that you compose your own curriculum and you can combine whatever you want to combine. Normally, you can take up to about a quarter of your classes in one subject. For physics, that is a little bit more, but also there, there are limitations. You really do need to take a substantial amount of courses in other subjects. The obvious combination with physics would be mathematics, of course. And if I look at the students who do the double degree, um, one of my own tutees, because every student gets a personal tutor and a personal tutor is an academic advisor and they help you choose your classes. They help you figure out your way in the curriculum, what would be good classes for you, what you would need to get to graduate, what you would need to get for a master's degree. And one of my students is doing the double degree and they are combining physics with mathematics and economics and statistics. But Philippe, you've seen other combinations as well, right? Uh, so yes. what are other things that people have combined physics with? With the earth sciences, mm -hmm. for example, it's becoming a growing interest, as I will mention later on. Yeah. Philosophy, historically, philosophy and yeah. physics used to be known as the philosophy of nature, natural philosophy in the Aristotle's times. And that's a very common option that the students of physics have taken here. Yeah. Especially if you look at things like quantum physics, they're great. Uh, overlap with uh, metaphysics, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we offer several other options as well. Uh, the double degree in physics, obviously, which is why you're here, but also a museum studies program, an entrepreneurship minor, if you're interested in starting your own company, a pre-med program. You can go to East Africa, which is a field course in Kenya, which is then for, or Tanzania this year, I should say, which is then followed by an internship. That's open to everyone, no matter what your interest is, because it's really the internships are for people from the sciences, from the social science, from the humanities. Field research in Aruba, especially if you're interested in environmental systems, that's a really nice option. You would go to Aruba then to collect data for your research thesis. You can take classes on sustainability, do a research assistantship or go abroad for a semester. Now UCU itself, we have over 50 partner universities worldwide. Uh, and that biggest partner university is uh, the University of California. So you could go to Berkeley or San Diego. We could also go to Canada, to Mexico, to Peru, to Australia, South Korea, Singapore, China, India, Morocco, anywhere in Europe, lots of different places. And if you then think among those 50 partner universities, there's not what I want to do. Utrecht University has more than 80 partner universities worldwide. And you can also go to one of those universities. As mentioned, we have small classes. We have on average 20 students in the classroom. And I think for the physics class, and it's often even smaller than that, up to 15 people or so, um, there's continuous assessments, meaning there will be some kind of exam every four or five weeks. Uh, we have a semester system. So we start at the end of August, we run until Christmas, and then we start again at the end of January and run until mid-May with then lab courses. Because of course, if you do the sciences, you'll need to do labs in the summer and in the winter period. Um, you would be in class about 14 and a half hours a week and it's very interactive because these classes are very small. There's a huge emphasis on discussions in class and really talking through the material together with your teacher. In order to graduate, of course, you have a lot of different options, but you do need to meet certain requirements to graduate. So you would need to do research methodology classes as well as so-called language and culture classes that could be Dutch. If you are international, but it could also be German, Spanish, Italian, French, Chinese, sign language, 
Arabic, Latin. And I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something, but you can find them all on our website if it's not here. The other thing is because it is a liberal arts and sciences program, you do also need to take class, one class at least in social science and one class at least in science, but it can be whatever you want. Lots of academic support available as well. I already mentioned the personal tutor, but in every subject also has a so-called fellow, a professor like Philippe, who can help you with advice about master programs or about uh, taking classes at Utrecht University or maybe even another university in the Netherlands, a writing and skills center where you can get help with presentation skills, writing skills, but also statistics, and a future center that can help you prepare for job interviews, master implications, applications, those kind of things. Now that's basically what it means to study liberal arts and sciences here, but as mentioned, it does come with residential living. If you uh, apply to University College Utrecht and you're admitted, you are guaranteed a room on campus. And that's because we know that living on campus is part of the education. The first two years, we expect you to live on campus. The third year, if you want to, you can move off campus. Um, but by living together with people from all over the world who all study different things, you just learn a lot in your daily life, all kinds of communication skills that you wouldn't normalize, normally otherwise have uh, obtained. Guaranteed housing, as mentioned, uh, most of our rooms are single bedrooms, but they are all furnished. You would share an apartment with anywhere between four to 12 students, and that would be an apartment with first, second, third year students, Dutch and international students, and all different genders. It's all mixed. If you're curious to see what that looks like, well, you can see two room examples on our right. One is a living room, another one is a bedroom. And you can also find a campus tour video on YouTube. And we're right in the residential neighborhood in the Netherlands and we are 10 minutes from the city center. And of course, 10 minutes in the Netherlands is 10 minutes by bicycle. So we're very much part of the city. The student community, uh, as mentioned, is very international and it means that all the activities on campus are also in English. We have a STEM committee that organizes all kinds of lectures and workshops, but you can also um, take part in all kinds of arts uh, activities, whether that is an open mic night, the musical or dance classes. Um, we just finished a so-called cultural cookery event, which meant that for two weeks our students ran a restaurant in town. Uh, they cooked all the meals, they waited, they provided the entertainment, they basically run the restaurant for two weeks and then all that money goes to charity. Um, all kinds of book clubs, sports on campus, you name it, it's available. There's a gym on campus as well as a bar, all kinds of reversal spaces. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Utrecht itself, if you've never visited, it's basically whatever you imagine Amsterdam to look like. We have the canals, we have the bicycles, the old buildings, all of that, the cobblestones. We're just a lot smaller. We have 380,000 inhabitants, a very historic city, very much a student city. So a lot of stuff going on for students, very good nightlife, very good cultural life, lots of festivals. Um, and we are located in the Netherlands, right in the middle. We're about half an hour from Amsterdam, Rotterdam and The Hague. And there's a train going to those cities pretty much every 15 minutes or so. After you graduate from University College Utrecht, if you have a European passport, you can stay in the Netherlands, work here, find a job, do a master, whatever you like. If you have a non-European passport, you can apply for a so-called orientation year. And that would give you permission to stay in the Netherlands for one year. And you can use that year for internships, for job search, whatever you want. And you can get that visa uh, as long as you apply within three years after graduation. Almost all of our graduates do go on to a master's program afterwards. Uh, at this moment, about 60% of our students stays in the Netherlands, 40% goes abroad. Fun fact, <laughs> most of the students that stay in the Netherlands, they are international. And most of the students that go abroad tend to be Dutch. In the Netherlands, they'll go anywhere. You can stay in Utrecht to continue with physics, but you could also go, for instance, to Eindhoven or Wageningen. Um, or you could go to England, that's very popular, to any of the London universities, but also to Cambridge or Oxford. But we also, for instance, have a student who did a PhD in physics in um, MIT. So lots of different places you can go to. Afterwards, what do our students do? Well, they usually do a master program first and then afterwards you can see a very wide range of different things that they have done in terms of work. Um, main thing that really stands out is that you see that about a quarter of our alumni continues in research and teaching. And that makes sense. 
because we are an honors program. So we are looking for students who like knowledge. And a lot of them will make that their career then. And it can be physics as well, which is the next topic. So this is where uh, Philippe takes over. Hi, hello. So let me tell you a bit about physics and UCU. So why study in a liberal arts and science environment? Well, you'll be learning about the physicist way of understanding the world. And I personally find it hard to define uh, what are the boundaries of physics and uh, to say to have, so I prefer to think about physics as a way of thinking how to explain and understand the natural phenomena around us, including ourselves in the long term. And uh, at UCU, an additional benefit is that we don't have uh, a traditional departmental structure, which will open much more opportunities for cross to cross disciplines and uh, combine the different subjects. And uh, of course, then the other important thing is that due to the liberal arts and science approach, you know, you'll be developing communication skills and cooperation and shared knowledge with people from different backgrounds, different ways of thinking. And that is at the core of what uh, UCU stands for. And finally, because of uh, the fact I was mentioning that there are different disciplines being represented in the UCU, you can combine physics with other subjects that you are curious to study and to know more about during your years of undergraduate study. So, what kind of students is this program for? And hopefully you might identify yourself as one of them. First, and of course, this will be for those students who are considering an academic career in physics, but would like to explore other fields outside it. Some that could be related or not so. Like, for example, you could, uh, but in this situation, will be more related topics, as I will uh, come to it uh, a bit later. Students in, in, uh, interested in applying physical concepts to address real life problems. What am I thinking about here? Think about the issues we are facing with global warming, you know, increasing population, how are we going to feed them? And the medical help, how to treat an aging population. And of course, the whole issue around energy and sustainability. That links to the first topic I talked about. So there are, this is the idea of real life problems and physics will have much to contribute to anybody working on these fields or planning to work on these fields. And of other type of students will be those that want to work on related topics to physics, like earth and environment, so the geosciences, neurosciences, sustainability, or life or medical sciences. And outside what we might say the more uh, natural sciences, we really can go into the areas of humanities and social sciences in areas like uh, sociology, psychology. There are many people in this fields that are collaborating with physicists. Finally, just as a, an example, I can, I'm just mentioning briefly uh, people, world leaders or influential politicians who had a, a, a physics background. And I chose here three of them in a way directly or indirectly, I know about their stories. There's the case of Angela Merkel, which was a chancellor in Germany for more than 10 years. And she did an undergraduate in physics in uh, what was at the time East Germany. And I happen to know uh, one of his, her professors. We already identified on her a very smart person and a great ability to organize and uh, work in teams. Antonio Guterres uh, is now our United Nations uh, secretary. And in particular, I know some of this because one of my colleagues, professor in, in Lisbon, uh, worked with him while he was a student and, and knows about the passion he had and even he contemplated for quite some time to follow a career in physics. And finally, Robert Dykraff, a researcher in physics that I know from a common interest of research that I had 10, 20 years ago, and who is now a, a Minister of Education in the Netherlands and been a very popular person in promoting science in the Dutch television. So, what will this then program involve? What do you achieve with it? So, at the end of this program, you'll get two fully accredited bachelor's degrees. A Bachelor of Science in Liberal Arts and Science, which is from UCU, 
and one in physics from the physics department at the science faculty of the Utrecht University. Most likely, I recommend that this is to be done in four years, but in special cases, it might be possible to complete it in three and a half. During this program, you'll be completing courses both at UCU and at the uh, physics department of Utrecht University. They will all be taught in English, and I will soon give a bit more details about uh, uh, th this, uh, the curriculum that you'll be building uh, in between these two institutions. And of course, you'll then be fulfilling all the graduation requirements for both institutions. And I'd like to emphasize that from UCU, you will have the breadth requirement already mentioned by Kim, uh, doing courses in humanities or social sciences and social sciences, the methodology and language requirement that all of our UCU students have to uh, complete. And at the physics department, you'll have an opportunity to work in a laboratory for which uh, for normal UCU students, there is re limited uh, possibilities to work on a physics lab. So, and the, what, what are our goals? Why, why did you start this program? So the idea was for a need to prepare students for many possible master's programs in physics. At any of the master's programs, for example, being offered at UU, will be, you'll be well prepared to join any of those. But I'll say also that internationally, you will have a very good chance to, to go directly to a, a master's program elsewhere. And uh, also, I'll have in mind that this could also be useful for related programs, such as neuroscience and earth and environment, areas in which I see increasingly by reading information on interdisciplinarity journals that there is a promising uh, areas within this overlap with these two subjects of many opportunities in the coming 10, 20 years. As for the core content that you'll be doing at the uh, in our program, you'll be during your first few years, you'll be doing courses in mechanics, relativity, wave phenomena area where uh, you'll also be a special important for some of these cross disciplinary uh, cooperations that you could have with the physics background. Waves essentially has to do with most ways in which energy and information is transmitted, whether it is electromagnetic wave, sound wave, or even brain waves, which will link to the neuroscience uh, promising field of uh, cross disciplinarity with, uh, with physics I mentioned early on. You'll do the courses in electromagnetism, statistical mechanics. Statistical mechanics is also a very important contribution and area in physics that will provide you a good preparation to cross discipline. We're talking about the system with many particles. And this relates, for example, also to the image of the starlings on the initial uh, slide for my presentation, where you are describing the motion of all these birds. They look to be following a purpose or a plan, but in practice, there is no leader there. And all it comes out is out of some small rules between a bird and its neighbors, whether they're moving faster or slower, can they move to the right or to the left? Out of that, somehow you create uh, a combination of global effects that are for the entire group of birds and locally for the ones in its close neighborhood. And this has important relevance for issues concerning complexity. Quantum mechanics, always a very important branch of physics, as you know, for physics at the atomic and the nuclear scale. And that will be related to many areas and applications in physics, like physics of materials. And the you then at some stage when you're starting going to do more courses at the physics department, the last two subjects I mentioned in this, this uh, series of uh, topics will be structure of matter and fluid dynamics. And one of these courses you will have to complete to obtain your graduation requirements for physics. And, I, and they are a good example to also illustrate the two main areas in which you can specialize in physics. Structure of matter will lead you to more the quantum fundamental physics, physics of materials and statistical mechanics, while the fluid dynamics will lead the link to those interested in studying turbulence, atmospheric sciences, motions in oceans, and so on. Finally, uh, you will also have to complete four courses 
at a higher level for your graduation requirement plus a graduation thesis. And there'll be many different subjects. You can choose that as I already indicated. This can go from more astrophysical topics like gravitational waves and cosmology to condensed matter, which will be related with the physics of material and turbulence fluids, which are related with atmospheric physics and subatomic physics, which had to do, for example, with the work and research that is being done at CERN in Geneva. Many of our staff in the physics department are working in corporations with CERN. So let's now have just a brief overview. So as I mentioned, the advice plan is to do the, the program in four years. So during the first year, you'll be mostly doing your breadth requirement and often the language requirement and the research in context course that is for general academic skills. And you'll we'll have this freedom to explore different subjects, including in this first year, uh, physics or other areas. So then on the second year, then you'll have to start specializing. So by a multidisciplinary major, we're talking about that you, it's one of, one of the requirements that is you, that you complete, uh, study two different fields up to a high level. And further specialization will then be followed uh, at, during that year. At the third year is for those working, planning to do the double degree. It's where they will start following courses at the physics department. So at that stage, halfway through the course, you'll have to submit your plan, study plan to, to the physics department, which will then be evaluated and uh, hopefully approved. Finally, in the fourth year, mostly, most courses we will be doing will be on the physics department, but there will be still also plenty of free time for you to complete uh, other subjects at UCU. So not necessarily that you will only be doing courses at, uh, at the physics during your first, first uh, last year. So, Next, I will then, uh, using the profile of Yolders, which unfortunately he could not be present here today. So he's a student that graduated this year with a physics double degree. So in this case, during his first year, you can see here in gray, the, 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 the graduation requirements of UCU that he had to complete. In orange, you have the courses that are necessary for the physics double degree. And in red, you have courses that he will be doing by completing uh, studies in a different field other than physics for his Bachelor of Science at UCU. And as you can see on this case, he took courses both in biology and neuroscience, which was the, actually the area in which he, he completed a full set of three courses. So let's then move to his second year. Philippe, could you maybe go into the courses a little bit about the physics courses themselves? All right. So in this case, we have the course uh, on the introduction of waves, which I already mentioned, um, said a bit about it, because here we will be learning how waves behave in, a, in sound, in a electromagnetic waves and quantum mechanical waves. So it will be quite a broad, uh, interesting topic where we will have giving a overview of the different multifacets in which waves are studied in physics. You also be doing courses in, in uh, mathematics as naturally mathematical requirements, mathematical methods have in a way historically developed in parallel with many developments in physics. And uh, you know, the first year you'll have uh, uh, courses on calculus and linear algebra and more courses in uh, mathematics will be described on your second year at uh, UCU. And right, anything about this? the lab courses, maybe? I'll, I will say more. To, uh... All right, I can say something on the lab courses. For At this level, you have the course on computational physics, which in fact is a course about pro programming and data analysis. So this will link to the importance of uh, having experience with lab and data analysis that is one of the requirements at the physics department. 
and the course on the, the lab course on wave mechanics, wave and optics, sorry, which complements the course on the theoretical course on waves by giving you a more practical applications and measurements that you can do experimentally related with the waves. Right, so going on for the second year, uh, the case of Yoldas was a bit special because you can see here on this first semester, he did the course on relativistic and classical physics. And this course is often for the most majority of the students done during their first year. So that's also our recommendation for those interested in, uh, in the physics double degree. But what also the Yoldas plan shows is that you, it is also possible to, to take that course in the second year. So there's a again is a good example also of the flexibility you can have at the UCU. So besides that course, you're going to have about, as you can see, 50% of the courses in your second year will be related to the physics double degree if you're already thinking about following this program. We have the course in the classical and uh, electrodynamics. You have the courses on the mathematical methods. And there is now actually a new course in mathematics that will be replacing these two lab courses here on the mathematics that is now being offered in the spring. And finally, the, the fourth course at the, that you not have to take during the second year is the one on statistical physics and quantum mechanics. So it relates precisely to the statistical mechanics that I mentioned to you early on as in fact one of the areas in physics that it is very important for some, for you to cross disciplines into subjects like biology, neuroscience, and earth and environment. And in the case of Yoldas, you can see that he further explored other topics like biostatics, biostatistics, and molecular side biology, and he continued specialization on the, his second field on cognitive neuroscience. So, at the end of this year, so you'll have to decide is when you expect it to decide that uh, whether you're going to continue and do the, the, the double degree. But it's only halfway of the third year that you will be starting to take courses at the physics department and uh, will also have to submit your study plan to the, to the department, which should be done around December, January of the year, so roughly halfway, so that they will look at your curriculum, your motivations, and uh, they will be then, together with UCU, will come to a decision on the, on the continuation of your studies. So on this uh, last year, or better, this last year, uh, before you start doing more courses at uh, the physics department, you'll do our advanced courses in physics, advanced physics, which is essentially a course on the quantum mechanics. So a course about the quantum world, and it's also our plan to change the name of the course into that. Do you will have then the experimental course on the statistical mechanics? So this is not a full course, it's only a, a 2.5 uh, ECTSs, and they, it will be already done in the physics department, and you'll be actually working together with the physics students of the physics uh, bachelor's degree at the, at the faculty. So there'll be a, well, also your first op, uh, opportunity to interact with physics students and get to know more about uh, how things go and how is it to study at the physics department. And this will actually happen before your submission. So this will be also something that will be useful to help you uh, on your decisions. And in the case of the curriculum here from Yolas, you can see how we continued with uh, completing level three courses in imaging and human brain functions, which links to his neuroscience field, and evolution, culture, and human nature. So here, an, another area in which he also completed the requirement that you have at UCU of completing four three-level courses. So once you move to your second semester, sorry, can you move back one slide, King, please? Thanks. It's when you do the first required course at, uh, at the physics department. 
this will be or either the structure of matter, which was the case with the oldest, or the one on fluid dynamics for those more interested in uh, atmospheric sciences. In, in the case of the oldest, he already took a course at the three level in the physics department, the quantum matter. And an interesting course that he also did was this research training, which I strongly advise for those students who might be more in, inclined to do experimental physics. Not a requirement, but something I will certainly advise. Right, so we get now to our final year of Yola's study. So in his case, because he, he uh, accumulated several credits, he was able to do the last year by completing only three courses in the physics department, which complete the, the total number of four that are required, and did his research project. So in this means that in terms of full graduation, you are completing like five, effectively five courses or the, or the ECTS equivalent of five courses, which means that in general, you're still going to have freedom to complete three more courses besides this. In the oldest, he was able to accumulate credits for, to avoid having to do that. But in general, I would like you to know that you can still complete courses at UCU and that will also give you flexibility to complete other studies that uh, you are possible interested for your future uh, study plans. And this is where you can also see that if you do decide to do it in a shorter time, you could do it in three and a half years, but you can also spread it to four, whatever you prefer. Yes. Which will necessarily require good planning and organization skills. Yeah. <laughs> and that's also where, of course, the fellow and as well as your tutor come in to exactly. help you with that. Okay, so thank like you, Philippe. All right. So I will pass now to Kim that will tell you more about admissions and the, mm -hmm. the steps that go with joining our program. Yeah. So applying to the double degree in physics basically comes in two parts. First of all, you need to be admitted to University College Utrecht itself. And there, what we're looking for in admissions is basically that student profile that I started with. So we need to see that you have a wider interest, not just physics, but also other topics that you're really intellectually curious that you want to live in this international environment and are motivated. What we ask you then is that you start your application in StudiLink. That's a registration system in the Netherlands. And then you would continue your application in OSIRIS. So it's two steps. What we need from you then is a statement of academic motivation. What do you want to study and why? And why here? An activities form. What have you been spending your time on outside of class? your most recent grade transcript, and if you already have it, your diploma. Proof of English proficiency, if needed. There are exemptions to this. You can find them on our website. Um, and a recommendation letter, which needs to be submitted by one of your referees, by one of your teachers, and they submit it directly to us. Based on that, you may be invited for an interview that, can be, that will be online. And this year we had about 1,250 applicants for University College Utrecht as a whole, and we have about 250 places. So this is not the double degree itself, this is University College Utrecht as a whole. If you're doing Vario, we ask for an average grade of at least 7. If you're doing IB, 32 points, without TOK and extended essay. If you do A levels, at least two A's and a B. We do have preferred subjects then, which you can find on our website. If you have a different diploma, have a look at our website and you can find what our entry requirements are. For admission to UCU, this is sufficient. But if you start looking at the classes you need to take for the double degree program, you will find that those specific classes, Introduction to Classical Physics, for instance, they do ask that you've taken higher level physics or mathematics in high school already. That's not a hard requirement to apply to UCU, not even to be admitted to UCU. Um, but we do recommend that you have it because you could catch up on that knowledge, knowledge during your time at UCU. So if you don't have enough background in mathematics, you could take extra classes in mathematics here. But it does make the planning a lot more complicated. Um, and also just you need to catch up on a lot of information in a shorter amount of time. So if you have a chance to do this in high school already, we highly recommend that. The admissions procedure for the double degree program, that's slightly different then. In your first year, you would complete the general UCU requirements, so the breadth requirements, a class in social science, a class in humanities, also the mathematics courses, 
uh, and the specific uh, physics courses that you need to take in order to be able to pre-register for the, the admission to the DDLP program. In your second year, you complete other requirements and there are basically specific physics courses that we uh, need you to take. And in those classes, you will also gradually be introduced to the different formats that you can expect if you do the classes at the Department of Physics. At the end of the second year, you then officially apply and you are admitted. If you complete all the required courses with at least a C grade, that's usually about 60% or higher. And if your study plan is approved by the physics department. So this is not an automatic approval. You do need to uh, meet a couple of criteria. To apply to UCU, these are the deadlines of this year. And the reason they're still here is because next year they will be slightly different. Most likely our early application deadline will be December 1st. That's the deadline you want to use if you would like to apply to a scholarship or if you would like to have a decision by March. Our final deadline will be February 1st, uh, and we consider your application only complete if all of the documents that we ask for are uploaded on that specific day. Now, of course, uh, fees and finances, not unimportant. The tuition fee you pay is determined by your uh, passport, and that basically determines how much you would count on per month. Now, these amounts include basically everything except for your meals. So per month, you're looking at 950 euros if you're a European student, and you're looking at 1750 euros if you're a non-European student. But as mentioned, that includes pretty much everything except for your meals. Tuition fee for European students is about 4,500 euros. And if you would start this September, there will still be a discount for your first year of about 1,000 euros. Tuition fee for non-European students is 14,000 euros. That is because this tuition fee is not subsidized by the Dutch government. The European tuition fee is. Then you would also need to arrange a visa. That exact amount differs each year, but you're looking at 250 euros. As mentioned, housing is guaranteed and we do expect you to live here on campus. Uh, and that's about 6,700 euros a year, but that includes a furnished room, your electricity bill, your water bill, your internet bill, all of those things, as well as all of the facilities on campus. So the gym, use of um, what else do we have on campus, all the reversal spaces, the laundry rooms, everything, and also membership of our student organization. Um, yeah. You can pay in installments. The exception to that is if you need a visa, then in your first year, you do need to pay everything up front. But from the second year on, you can pay in amounts in different uh, times during the year. If you have a European passport, you can get a tuition fee loan from the Dutch government. We also offer need-based scholarships. As mentioned, we do have an early application deadline for that, December 1st. A student aid fund that you can apply for um, during the semester. Those are for smaller amounts, and you can apply for that even if you don't have a scholarship, but also if you do have a scholarship. If you come from the US, if you have a US passport, you can use the FAFSA loans, and you can, of course, also get a student job on the site. If you would like to visit us, we will have an in-person open day in November, but you can also visit our campus at other times throughout the year. We have regular webinars as well that are similar to this one, but a bit more in depth about UCU in particular. As mentioned, the campus video on YouTube, definitely check that one out if you don't know what our campus looks like. And we'll have all kinds of online events on social media uh, and the webinars as mentioned. And if you'd like more information, this is our website as well as um, an email address if you'd like to receive more information. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the slides right now. And with that, I will also stop the recording. Let me see.